And uh, he passed, he saw a blind man from, the, uh, uh, from his mother wombs, which means he is by birth. And they asked him, they were saying, they were asking Jesus, uh, our master, our Lord, who is the one who sinned because of his parents to cause him to be blind? Yeshua, he said to them, well, he had not sinned, nor his parents. Which means his blindness is not really the reason for sin. And actually, you will notice in the hadith, Muslims, they have exactly the same quotation about Muhammad saying that, copying Jesus. Uh, he had not sinned, nor his parents, and then it was uh, fitting for I do the work, etc. And then you will see that Jesus, he uh, made the blind see. And there is a story reported in different places too. You know, like obviously Jesus, he did a lot of miracles. Many blind men, many disabled, uh, endless number of miracles. When the blind man came to Muhammad, he did not ask him to see. He was not requesting him to do anything. He was just trying to ask questions about Islam. Even that Muhammad, he could not do to the blind man. He gave him a face. If you go here, chapter 80, verse number 1, and as you see, we show you Muslim interpretation, so nobody can say we are making things up. And this is the book of Asbab al Nuzul, which means the reason for the verse to come down, approved by Muslims. It says here, He thought he turned away when the, because the blind man came into him. Chapter 80, verse number 1 2, referred to Ibn Imam Maktoum. Uh, the later we went to see the prophet, Allah bless him, and gave him peace while he, uh, while the uh, the letter was meeting Utba, Ibn Rabia, and Abu Jahl. So he was waiting, you know, important people of Quraysh. And actually, even here it says that those are the rich people of Quraysh; they are the the highest. So he was calling uh, upon them to to accept Allah, hoping that they might embrace Islam. All right. Ibn Umu Maktoum, he stood up and he asked the Prophet a question. He said, Prophet of Allah, teach me. He did, that's all. He did not ask him to make him uh, see or anything. Teach me, please, what Allah here has taught you. And he kept requesting that, repeating the request, not knowing that he is busy dealing with someone else. Uh, but that does not make really sense because a blind man, he can hear. If he cannot see, right? So already he knew that there's people there, he is, they are speaking to him. But you will notice here that the hadith saying, or the story here says, the Muhammad he was afraid. Read carefully with me. Uh, he gave a sign of annoyance, appeared in the face of the Messenger of Allah. Allah pleased with him and give him peace because he is being repeating, uh, interrupted, and he said to himself, those are the chief. They will say his followers are consist of the only the blind, lonely people and slaves. Do you see the hypocrite? He was afraid that the chiefs, the rich one, they will say, "Look, who is the one who believe in him? This was this is the one who believe in him." Do you see how low Muhammad is? He care for the richness. He care for the position. He don't care for the blind man. And then they themselves, the Arab, who they witnessed this, they start talking about him. They said, well, a blind man, he came to him, and he made fun of him. He kicked him out. How he can be a prophet? <laughs> so Muhammad, he did not, you know, think about it, that this would be stupid from him too, to be rude to a blind man where everybody help a blind man. I mean, 
uh, your heart will be broken to see a blind man need help and you don't help him. So what's wrong if he's a blind man and if he is a poor person and he is coming and he's a believer, what's wrong with that? Because he cared for the rich, he don't care for the poor, so he get in face and then people just start talking about him. So Muhammad, he made a verse saying, Allah told me, why you did that to the blind man? Right? Uh, look what this guy is saying. I mean, go and watch Sheikh Uthman read the Arabic and let us see. And what about you call me and let us read Arabic together. And the one who don't know how to read Arabic, people will laugh at him. Do you dare? You do not know how to read Arabic. And by the potato, isn't it your prophet you do not know how to read Arabic? This is how stupid this religion is. Let us say for the sake of argument, nobody here speak Arabic. Nobody here understand Arabic. Nobody can read Arabic. So how you stupid you follow a prophet to teach you the book of God, which he himself cannot read. This is exactly what happened to Muhammad with the blind man. It was backfiring. The Muslim, they make a comment to put me down and their comment backfire on them because they are low IQ. So if you are saying the one who do not even know how to read Arabic is bad, is stupid, you just labeled your prophet, not me. Secondly, call me right now and I will see who is the one who speak Arabic or not. Arabic is my first language. I'm, but oh, what is my first? Why my English is funny then? There's always, there's like, well, you have to be strong in one language and bad in one language. So why my language is English? So what is my English then? German? Silly, stupid people. They, they didn't know how to refute you. You are Arabic, you don't, you're a prophet, you don't even know how to read his name. If we write the word donkey and the word Muhammad next to each other and we say Muhammad, which one is the one? He will not, he will say, Allah knows best. So look who is talking about knowing, knowing Arabic. And if you want, you can call me and let us see who knows Arabic, who don't. We can open the same page in Arabic, the same one we are reading. And I will ask you, I will read. You tell me which lines to read. Like, uh, read four lines. You tell me from where. Like you said to me, you start reading from here. You know? Tell me where. I will read. I will read in speed of light. And then you will read after me. Anything you want. In the same page. Do you dare? You don't. You are a potato. I mean, the, the most silly argument that Christian prince do not know Arabic. So what I'm reading all this time here, actually, as long as you mentioned to me reading Arabic, in this website, the one we mentioned in the fatwa, they have a poetry. And here you see that this poetry is made by a donkey. It says here, Translation, uh, I'm really wondering about the Messiah of the Christians. To which father they made him belong to? They gave him to the Jews and they said, And here you see the stupidity, the law IQ. The Christian, they say that the, the, the Jews, after they killed him, they crucified him. This is what the Christian, they say. Who is the one who wrote this poetry? A donkey. Because this is not what we believe. And here he says, فَإِذَا كَانَ مَا يَقُولُونَ حَقًّا وَصَحِيحًا فَأَيْنَ كَانَ أَبُو And if this is true, and this is what happened, where was his father? And here again, this will backfiring. You stupid. So if Jesus is a son of the father, then his father should save him. That means Jesus must be God in Islam. Because in Islam, God saved him. And if I make a poetry to respond to this, I will say in Arabic, maybe, أَيَّ حِمَارٍ أَتَى بِشَارٍ وَعِنْدَهُمْ عَلَى الْحَائِطْ عَلَّقُوا حِمَارٌ كَتَبَهُ فِيرٌ نَشَرَهُ
وذئب أكله وهم لا يفقهون Stupidity. None of us we believe that they killed him and then they crucified him. And this is the Google translation. They handed him over to the Jews, but we did not hand him over to the Jews. And after killing him, they crucified him. This is what the Christian believe. <laughs> Even the stupid Muhammad in the Quran did not say that. The stupid Quran says, we crucified Jesus and we killed him. We crucified him, you know, we killed, you know. Actually, hold on, hold on. Because I think this guy, he is confused because of his stupid book. Look what the stupid Quran says. And their statement, we killed the Messiah, the son of Mary. They killed him not, nor crucified him. <laughs> but the donkey, maybe because the Quran saying the word killed him first, and the word crucify next, he thought that the Christian, they think that the Jews, they killed Jesus first, and then they crucified him. <laughs> Uh, I just said that a donkey he sing. Anyway, the Arab didn't know what I said. So you see here, the Muslim, uh, they ask one Zakir Naik, why Jesus, he have miracles, I don't know which video. He said, uh, Sister, Brother Sister, at the time of Jesus, there was a lot of advanced medical. This is why Jesus beat upon him. He was giving miracle have to do with medicine. What medicine? What Jesus giving aspirin? What medicine? And in the time of Jesus, medicine was ad advised, ad advanced. And Muhammad came 600 years after it was not advanced. I mean, do you see how they try to explain the stupidity? Their low IQ? They can't explain why Jesus, he can raise people from death, he can make the blind see, he can walk in the water, he can feed thousands, he is in heaven right now. They cannot explain that. So they say in the time of Jesus, medicine or medical was advanced. But they forgot that Muhammad, he came 600 years after. Imagine 600 years before now, that medical was more advanced than now. And the miracle of Jesus have nothing to do with medicine anyway. As you see, like when Jesus, he made the guy, see, he did not give him medicine. He said to him, take it three times a day. <laughs> oh boy. When I say stupidity is amazing, I have my reasoning. Anyway, I think we have a good time today. Uh, later, we will publish another video, just short video in the other channel. So those who do not know that we are here for now, they will know in the Christian Prince channel. Uh, so they will join us because until now we have like, I don't know why, a very low number of a view. Don't forget to download the videos. As you know, I don't keep my videos. Download them, share them, re-upload them. Uh, and take reference always because always reference is what make you knowledgeable. And later when you need them, they are like gold. Actually more than gold. Because those can change life of people. Literally. Uh, did Muhammad or the Quran say the book are corrupt? Which book? You mean our books? You see, when the Muslim actually they say our books are corrupt, then you, uh, you need to question the IQ of the one who say that. Why? Because how come the Quran says that we are the people of the book if the book is corrupt? You know what I mean? If our book is corrupt, 
then all those statements, you see those in, 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 uh, in yellow? All of this, it says, people of the book, people of the book, people of the book, people of the book. I mean, this guy, he have a machine. Oh, people of the book, people of the book, people of the book. Non-stop, people of the book, people of the book, all over the Quran. So how we don't have a book and we are called the people of the book? If our book is corrupt, then we are not people of the book. And you will notice that Muhammad and his people, they are not people of the book. Do you notice that? Only Christian and Jews labeled in the Quran as people of the book. Imagine you say, like, okay, Sam Shamoon one day, he used to have hair. He used to have hair, or maybe he, when he was 10 years old. And now you say the guy with the hair, I mean, the guy, he lost his hair a century ago. So either we are people of the book, or we are not. <laughs> and the funny, they say to you that the Quran is made in a very powerful, you know, <laughs> very powerful book in the language. And this is why the Arab, they laugh at the Quran, actually. And they laugh at the stories of Muhammad. As an example, the Muslim, they say to you that, uh, you know, the Arab were amazing, brother, amazed with the Quran, you know. Okay. So why they say that? Why they say this to Muhammad? If they are amazed, why they keep saying this is this is fiction story? This is fairy tale stories. Those are stories we know them from the previous generation, huh? Each time he read the Quran for them, he they laugh at him. And look at that, look, just to show you another stupid verse of the Quran, chapter six, verse number twenty-five. This one is hilarious. And then. And then there are some who listen to you, but we have set the veils on their heart, so they understand not. <laughs> Question, Muslims, why? Why Allah doing that? The poor Muhammad, he go to recite the Quran for them so they might believe. Allah, he set a veil in their heart, why? <laughs> So Muhammad, he sent people, sent, sent his, as Allah, he sent his prophet Muhammad to speak to those people. And then when he go there, it doesn't work. Muhammad, he want to explain why, why nobody is believing in his stupidity. So I said, okay, well, you know what? Allah, he said, veil in their uh, heart, okay? Yeah. So why he send you there to them? And why you blame them? If you are the one who seal their eyes and they're here, why you are blaming them? Why you are saying they are bad? And then they said to him, well, this is what? The fabulous or the fairy tales of the old man. This is a story you tell us, you idiot. This is just like Zulkarnain, he went, he found uh, uh, people who have no cover on them. They ask him to build a dam between them and Gog and Magog. Uh, you know, all the stories. All those stories. It's the fairy tale. The Prophet Al Khadr, Mr. Green. He, why he was called Mr. Green Prophet Muhammad? Muhammad, he is the smart boy. He says, okay, because he drank from the water of the life. Now, what the heck? He found the fountain of youth. He found the fountain of, are you sure? Let us find you the story so the Muslim they will not say. Okay, where is the story? Yeah. <laughs> it turned to be that uh, the part of the Caribbean movie is coming from there. Uh, oh, this is a story, but I want to find the, the a specific hadith here. Okay, here we go. 
I want to give you this hadith as a homework. And when somebody he says to you, and by the way, this is a very authentic hadith. This is Sahih Bukhari. Yeah, there's a reason he told, he was called the Green because uh, Mr. Uh, Al Khudr, uh, uh, when he sit in the grass, even if the grass is dry dead, the grass will turn green because he drank from the fountain of youth and looked like he is not wearing a panty, so he sweat and his sweat looked like he he regenerate. You know that like that's it. He drank the water of youth. And that's it. Like he became the fountain himself. So this guy, he was in the time of Muhammad. He was in the time of Moses. He was in the time of Noah. He was in the time of Jesus. He was in the time of the, the funeral of Harun, uh, which have forty thousand person. Their name is Aaron. Can you believe it? That the funeral of Aaron, the one who attended, is forty thousand people. All of them, all the men, their name is Aaron. True story, brother. There's nobody in the in the in the world. The, the Jews they call everybody Aaron. <laughs> Forty thousand people, all of them they are Aaron. Yes, brother. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. And here you will see. Uh, I mean, uh, let me post the link for you so later you can read it. Take your time if you want to laugh. If you want to show people some stupid stories, and this is this is the one the Muslim they say he is a prophet of God. So anyway, they stop beside the water. Okay. And uh, uh, let us see where it says, just to be sure that this is the hadith we are talking about. Uh, okay, maybe this is not the exact hadith we want. Uh, let us see a different one. Yeah, I think this is a different one. Hold on. But I mean, even the one we gave you, it's funny. Uh, but let's see if we can find even something better. Uh -huh, here we go. Uh, so here you will see that when Moses and his uh, servant, they arrived to the place where Allah, he told them to go to meet, to find uh, uh, Mr. Green. Uh, Allah, he told them a sign that when your whale go missing, this is where you should find him so they stopped near a spring of water called al-hayat al-hayat means the life <laughs> the life the spring of water called the life and none come in touch with its water but become alive what the heck who want to have a bottle of this water we will make an auction today I am an Arab. I know where it is located. I can take you there. Each time you, you know, actually you will not die. You take one drink of it, like one, one drop, like a Prophet al Khadr, and you will be alive in the time of Moses, in the time of uh, Jesus. I mean, judgment day, you pass judgment day. Even God maybe cannot kill you because that's it. You drug from the fountain of youth. And you will be always young, brother. You remember that. Women, they would love this, man. I'm unbelievable. I will, I, will take, I will make a lot of money if I can get this water. I forgot where is the location. You know, I remember my dad, he knew where. But my dad, he forgot too. My grandfather, he knew where. But he forgot too. But my grand grandfather, he knew where. But I guess he forgot too. For all of this, because, you know, women in the Middle East, they are very aggressive. And when you fight with them, they use their high heels. So what do you expect? So... They sit next to a spring of water called Al Hayat. And who is talking? Prophet of Allah. Telling the story to the Muhammadan. Now, the Muslim, they will say to you, This is not the Prophet saying that, you know? This is Ibn Abbas. Not <laughs> Ibn Abbas. He's quoting his Prophet. Where Ibn Abbas, he will say. And look, because this one, once I was debating a sheikh, he says to me, Christian Prince. I got you busted. Read with me. It says, Ibn Abbas, he said, Ibn Abbas, he claimed, blah, 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 blah. Okay, hold on. I said to him, uh, Sheikh, a potato, go up to the top, it says, the statement of Allah, the most high, say, O Muhammad. Shall we do? <laughs> who is the one who explained it? 
and then say, and, and where Ibn Abbas will know those stories? You know, your prophet, he told them. And if you go to different hadith too, you know, you will see the story getting more complicated. And Muhammad, he don't even, this guy, he know everything. He's a doctor. He is a, a, in astronomy good. He is good in biology. I mean, this is a prophet Muhammad, brother. Come on. You know, prophet Muhammad, you know, and forget, he is the best and forget about the rest. You know? Yeah. So, uh, uh, he, you know, he, uh, he told them the story of uh, uh, Al Khadr, and then this fish or this whale went inside the ocean. And how how is that happen? I don't know. She can walk. I mean, they are not next to the ocean, but she walked all the way to the ocean. And then when she walked in the ocean or this uh, whale, she made a tunnel. Look, 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 look. The fish she jumped in the water. And wherever the fish go, the water will not close. We became like a tube. You know what I'm saying? Like the fish is swimming in the water from the point she jumped in the beach. Moses and his friend, they walk in that tube. It's like a pipe. So they will keep going, they keep going, they keep going inside the tube, inside the ocean. Read carefully. I did forget indeed about the fish, etc. And this is the Quran 1863. Uh, uh, okay, and then it says they came back uh, re re retracting their steps and they found they found in the sea the way to the fish looking like a tunnel. So there was astonishing event of his attendant. And there was a tunnel for the fish. When they reached the rock, they now they took the tunnel inside the sea, brother. When they reach the, you know, and they keep going, keep going, they reach a rock. Okay? They found a man covered with garment. Moses, he said to him, Assalamu alaikum. The, the guy, he said, if there is any such a greeting in your land, Moses, he said, or Habibi and Musa's Habibi. <laughs> the man he said to him, Musa's from the children of Israel. Look how Musa was famous. I mean, this guy in a Bahrain, you know what Bahrain is? And Musa is just his name. Musa, he did not say, I'm a prophet. Musa, Musa, that's it. The guy right away said to him, Oh, wow, you are Moshe. From the Israeli Moshe, huh? are you? Huh? The, the, the Moshe, Moshe, he said, <coughs> yes, <coughs> it's me. He hold his tie, like, proud about himself. Like, finally, I'm being recognized. So Moshe said, yes, and added, may I follow you so that I, you teach me something? Look, Moshe, why, why Moshe says that? Because Moshe, he was telling his friends that he is the most knowledgeable about God. And Allah told him, don't be stupid, there's more knowledgeable. So Allah, he sent them here to learn. I mean, the story go in chapter 18, verse number 66, as you see. But, you know, I'm really, I'm really happy that Musa was, I mean, at that time, the Jews, they don't own TV stations or anything. How in the world they were able to reach all the way to Bahrain? That's really good. I mean, you just say, and the guy, there's a rock in the middle of the ocean. And yet this guy, he knew Musas, but he did not know how he looked like. I mean, how you know Musas? We don't know how he looked like. And how come this guy is so knowledgeable, but he could not recognize Musas? Anyway, Musas, you know, is a... Musas in Islam is a very weird person. Especially, and I don't like really what he does. Especially when he ran after the rock. When the rock, she stole his clothes. And uh, Allah wanted to prove that the testicles of Moses, they are beautiful. Uh, because Moses always, he's weird really. He don't like to take shower with men, which is really weird. Muhammad, he love it. Uh, <clears throat> so Allah wanted to prove that Moses have a nice uh, penis. And the, most, the, the Jews, they accuse him that he have a sexual disease. Shame on them, you know. I mean, how Moses is going to have sexual disease if he always use condoms? I have no idea. 
Isn't it a Muslim you say prayer of Allah and then Allah will protect you from the shaitan and this is the kingdom of Allah? Okay. So look what happened here. It says here, among the, the tradition of narrated from Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, this is a story made from Muhammad directly. So take it seriously. Muhammad never lied. You know that. In the authority of Abu Huraira. Authority. Authority. And what his name? Abu Huraira, the father of the cats. Nice to meet you, man. How many cats and kids you have? Uh, uh, that one of many Israel used to take a bath uh, naked. One of them he used to take bath naked. I thought all people they take bath naked. <laughs> <sighs> he take bath naked. I mean, is that really acceptable? Since when people they take bath naked? You know, my shower is very fast. So my mother, she used to ask me, did you even take your clothes off? <laughs> so he used to take a bath naked, that same thing, okay? And they look at his private part. Ah, oh, what a bad boys. Uh, one another, Moses, peace be upon him, however, he took a bath alone in privacy. And they said, hmm, mm hmm, by Allah, nothing forbids Moses to take a bath along with us, but he have a squirrel, arena, I don't know if I'm saying it right, arena, yeah, you make fun of my English, you know what, there's one, one, there's one here, he was, he, he make fun of my English, honestly, this is a true story, by the way, he made fun of my English, he woke up in the morning, looked like me, <laughs> Allah punished him, <laughs> what a horrible punishment, <laughs> You see what happened? Don't make fun of my English. So, scrotal. What the heck with this English? Scrotal hernia? Okay, forget it, forget it, whatever it is. Demos has once went for a bath and placed his clothes on a stone. That's why I will never put my clothes on a stone. I put them on the floor. And the stone moved on with his clothes. Like, what the heck? And Moses ran after it, saying, Oh stone, oh my clothes, oh stone, oh my clothes. I, you know what? This reminds me of a guy I know. His wife, she took his money, you know. Like, <laughs> she took his car. <laughs> and she took his credit card. <laughs> and she took the keys. And he was running after her in the street. He says, Oh my car, oh my money, oh my. <laughs> So unbelievable! I, I love it. I love it. I love it. So anyway, brother, brother, sister, and look here, Moses. I mean, look, you are a man taking a bath alone. A stone is moving, running with your clothes. Shouldn't the guy first be astonished? Like, what the heck? A stone is moving, running. Moses, he don't he don't notice that. He, he he's just like my clothes. My wallet, you know, he's a Jew, man. What do you expect? You know, Muslims, how come the guy was not saying, what the heck, a stone is running? How that can happen? I mean, which one is more, more important? What, what is more event happening now? The, 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 the clothes or the stone is running? <laughs> Imagine you go out in the desert or somewhere, and then the stone is running. So what you are worried about now is your wallet. Like, shouldn't you be like, what the heck? Like you touch your eyes, you know, you clean them again. Are you like awake? Am I dreaming? No, Moses is like, it's, at that time, brother, stones used to do that. They used to, at that time, this is the Uber stone, <laughs> Uber stone, what they call it, Uber, taxi. So stones at that time, they make a corporation. It's called Uber. <laughs> So then, brother, to make the story shorter, it's very short, by the way, the story, this is short, the shorter than the life of Muhammad. So he said, oh, my clothes, oh, my stone. Thank God he don't have a phone at that time. He would make more drama. He would say, oh, my iPhone. And then, and Banu Israel had the chance to see his, what? <laughs> Finally, look at this penis, brother. 
ما شاء الله ما شاء الله it was a lie the rumors look at this and he is wearing sunglasses too <laughs> so all this drama the story and the funny they say to you that in the bible in the old testament there's a prophet of god he was naked in the desert first of all abdul in the desert there's nobody secondly he was not naked a priest he have Izar, and this is or they say it's like a uniform you know you wear in the top of your clothes when you perform your work so when they want to humble themselves they want to like not to be recognized between people so people will not pay them respect and you know they take off that uniform that is the nakedness they are talking about here this is real nakedness the guy is wearing nothing and it says here they saw his private parts hey, by the way how many he have <laughs> I mean, I really, I, I'm wondering how, Musa, how many private parts you have? What, what does that mean exactly, Muslims? His private parts? Do you think he was because he was prophet, like he have two penises? Four testicles, maybe? What do you mean his private parts? So, you know, who put a stone? She took, she took, uh, I, I, you know, true story. This is a true story. What's wrong with you people? And if you ask uh, Zach and Nag, why is Zach and Nag don't treat for those 10,000 people watching him? How amazing Prophet Muhammad, dignity and ethic and uh, trustworthy and truth teller, storyteller. This is a true story. And then, uh, by the way, when they say that the private part of Musa's, they are very nice. Uh, you know, the, uh, look, and the stone stopped in the middle of the town. I mean, the stone, she even knew that she knew where to go. She did not go in the wrong direction with nobody. The stone, she's working for Allah, Ooh, uh, Allah over. So the stone, she took the clothes. And by the way, how come the clothes still stay still in the top of the rock and the rock is jumping? <laughs> Do you think the rock she have a pocket? I mean, I cannot believe it that the guy he put a clothing in the top of the rock, and now the rock is running, and yet the clothes did not fail down. What the heck is that? I need to think about it. You know, hmm. Stone is running. Boing, 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 and the clothes is still there. And the stone stopped in the middle of the downtown of the Jewish people. And then, still, Moses had seen by, look, 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 look at this evil stone. Tell, do you see the word tell? The still, the still here, tell the whole story. Many of you are not smart enough to notice how, how, how important this tell. I'm telling you, this is very important tell. So this tell here is telling us how telling Muhammad is, tell. So the story keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, uh, uh, tell, that's it. Like, boosh. This is the point. This is the edge. This is the target. This is where we want to be. Tell Musa has been seen by them. So the stone, she was trying to be sure that every single one of them is seen Musa's private parts. <clears throat> Please, the Christian prince, down the page. Are you trying to see the private parts of Musa's too? Shame on you. Don't you think? Okay, why you want to need? Why you need to get your head down in the page when the guy is wearing nothing? I mean, I know that you do that if somebody wearing a skirt and you want to see you with your head down. Please, the Christian prince, bring you know, the down page. You remind me of the Arab, they are watching a, a movie. And they were wondering what the woman she is wearing down there. So they put the TV in the top of a TV in the top of a TV so they can see her, you know, down there. They thought if we put a TV in the top of the TV on top of TV, we can see the whole image together, you know. Anyway, true story, by the way, Sahih Bukhari. So, stop till Moses had 
been seen by them. And then he took hold of his clothes. Finally. Look, Moses is not an easy cookie. Don't ever play with Moses. It's time now to pay. So Moses, he then took hold of his clothing and he struck the stone. What the heck? He started beating the stone. And then Abu Huraira, he said, By Allah, there are marks six or seven. Look, Abu Huraira is not sure, to be honest with you. There are six or seven. I'm not sure really, you know, like, mm, to be honest with you, six, six, seven, seven, ten, ten, nine, nine. <laughs> I mean, you see the, you see the honesty, like, by Allah, by Allah, the guy is swearing, is serious, brother. But Abu Huraira, you stupid. Like, how, did you see the stone? If you're a prophet saying that to you, did your prophet see the stone? What do you mean by Allah? There are marks. I mean, this was a very bad beating, man. I mean, how, how strong Moses was. And he struck the stone with what? Maybe he's a private part. Oh, Moses, you know, he has a stick. And by the way, did the stone still stole the Moses' stick too? I mean, don't tell me that Moses went to the water to take a bath with, 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 with his staff. <laughs> Sorry. Isn't it beautiful to learn the amazing knowledge of Prophet of Allah? And remember, the one who said this story is the messenger himself. So it must be a true story. And this is Sahih, authentic. So if those kuffar, they try to make fun of it, you laugh at them. And you tell them, long before today, Allah used to run Uber, stone Uber. Stone stole the clothes of the Prophet and his stick. Never trust the stone again. Never. And this is a very sad story, by the way. Imagine you're a Prophet of God. And then Allah wanted you to run naked in front of everybody. Just to prove that you have a nice private parts. Hey Allah, can't you publish like a picture on Facebook? I mean, what this is scandal is about, all of this to prove that he, what about making one person see him naked, just one? I mean, do you need to make, and what about the children and the kids? I mean, this is the, the middle of the town. Oh boy. <clears throat> anyway, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you did not subscribe yet, and don't forget to unsubscribe if you are subscribed uh, already. Because according to Islam, <laughs> if you subscribe to Christian Prince, Allah will take from you one deed, will take away from a deed. But if you unsubscribe, Allah will give you double deeds. So subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe. By the end of the day, you will make millions deeds. And this is how you can beat Allah and his intelligence. Nobody can beat Allah Prophet. His story is true. His logic is amazing. In his Quran is beyond geography, astronomy, and stupidity. Uh, did I say stupidity? Uh, no, I, I mean uh, uh, simplicity, simplicity, sorry, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, come on, YouTube, Sharia law, they will go and say, did this guy, this is against our guideline, you are making fun of the Quran? <laughs> against our guideline. Give me a break with your guideline, you idiots. <laughs> we laugh as we wish, and we expose the liars. What you can do about it. Thank you all for being here. Download the video, share it, and uh, I hope you learned something good. And if you did not learn something good, 
I pray to Allah to make the stone carry on your clothes and run with it. And if it's not the stone can do that, your wife, trust me, they are very capable. They will take your wallet, they will take your car, they will take your house, they will take everything. Oh boy, did I say wife? <laughs> I don't mean it. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> Thank you all for uh, being here. I hope you have a good time. And now we have an hour and 34 minutes. I think this is more than enough. This is very long, actually. I'm trying to make my video short. And as you notice, we have now videos for TikTok. They are less than three minutes. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I broke the record. <laughs> yeah, I can do it. Look like I can. So don't think to download. Share them with your friends. Because this is the only way we can keep our videos up and people they can learn always remember if ever my channel is gone for some reason and it might happen anytime you can go always or go always to patreon uh, as you see in the screen patreon.com slash christian prince we do not need even to make a donation or anything we're not asking you for anything <clears throat> we know we know that most of you are cheap it's okay it's okay it's okay and most of you your wife she took the wallet <laughs> And right now you are naked and you are chasing the stone. <laughs> so we are not asking you to do anything. But this is where you can go and find me to find where my uh, uh, the coming broadcast will be. And at the same time, I would like to invite you to join us in... Uh, uh, what is it called? TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> what a funny name, man. I mean, the owner of this program, we could not find better program. I mean, name to find. Call it Prophet Muhammad. Go to stone. TikTok. TikTok. I mean, come on. So if you like to join us, this is my account in Tick and Talk. Uh, you can search for the Christian Prince. As you see in the screen. Right now we have 1,644 followers and 1,444 like. And this will remind me of the Philippines. I took the bus and the guy, he tell me, sir, I have to pay you back 44 pesos. <laughs> I said to him, say it one more time and keep the money. <laughs> so we have 1,044 uh, like and 1,000. I mean, what is the miracle? This is a miracle, brother. One, six, four, four. One, four, four, four. What the four, four, four? <laughs> hey brother, it must be a sign from Allah that we are blessed with many four. And by the way, if you are like a person from Korea, they don't have a floor four. <laughs> So now Korean people will not subscribe to my channel because it have too many four. <laughs> and Chinese, you know, they consider number four, I think, for death, something like that. And, you know, you go in Korea, you go in the building, like floor number three. Then, like, suddenly, floor number five. Like, what the heck? What is the floor number four? You go in the stairs, up, down, again. Did where is the floor number four? <laughs> Don't waste your time. There's no floor number four. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, you, you would love to go and travel and see the world, you know? You will learn a lot of things. Yeah, there's no floor number four. You know what? I would love to rent a floor in Korea, which is a floor number four because it's not exist. Nobody will find you. You don't pay rent. It's going to be for free. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, like, you know, people who they are superstitions, you know, this is one of the illness, actually, of society is believing in those things and, uh, you know, uh, taking them seriously, you know. Uh, but what you can do. People, people. And we are here to fix it. So thank you again for being here. May the Lord bless you all. Remember always you can find us on patreon.com slash Christian Prince. If you do not know how to find the website, which is patreon slash Christian Prince, 
uh, <laughs> then you will not be able to find me. Neither find you, Allah. <laughs> and uh, and the funny is the uh, the people they say to me, Christian Prince, how come we don't see you in that channel no more? Where are you? You know. So why we have a banner there? It says patreon.com slash Christian Prince. I mean, isn't it obvious? And you don't know where to find me. It's in the front of you in every video. <laughs> it's like having the address in the front of their eyes, and they say, "Where, where is, where is, uh, where we can find him?" I don't know, brother. What's wrong with you people? You became Abdul suddenly, or what? <laughs> All right, thank you all, love you all, and you hate me all, and I know it. Thank you very much. Take care. So unfortunately, as you see by the time... I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned, if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 